So, quick note, like Lynn, or no, it was Amber, sorry, not Lindsay. What Amber said at the beginning, how we all, all might have seen the problem before, you guys have definitely seen this, you're gonna think it's super easy. Just pretend you're not, and pretend you've never seen this before, and that way you might be able to make a discovery. So before we get started, I got a little scenario for you guys. So pretend you're walking down the street on one hot afternoon and you're really thirsty. Luckily, you spot a soda machine along the sidewalk and you decide that you're going to stock up on drinks at this machine. So you pull out $4 to buy your four, to buy four drinks on the machine, a dollar a piece. Doesn't matter what you're getting, everything's a dollar. So you go up to the machine and you decide to buy three Cokes and a Sprite. And when you insert your first dollar, you push the Coke button and you get a can of Coke. Then you do the same thing, you get another can of Coke. Then you push the Sprite button, you get a can of Sprite. And then again, you get a can of Coke. So just looking at these outcomes of what you did when you saw this machine, just a real quick question, does anybody see anything strange? Yeah. Everything thinks everything's normal? Yeah. So would you say that this machine is functioning? Properly. Mm -hmm. You would? Yes, I would. Alright, snap, snap. So the next day, you decide to go on your same walk and again decide to stock up at the same soda machine. And you again pull out $4, planning on buying the exact same drinks. So this time, the machine, something happened to the machine overnight, either it wasn't stocked correctly, whatever happened. This time you push the Coke button the first time and you get a can of Coke like you would expect. Then you go for another can of Coke and instead you get a can of Sprite. And then you think, okay, I'm going to get two cans of Sprite since that's what the machine wants me to do today. Then you randomly get a can of root beer. And then you try one more Coke and this time you get a water bottle. So looking at this, would you guys say that something is up here? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you say that the machine is functioning? No. no. At least not correctly, right? Yeah. So, looking at, at what the first machine did and this machine did, you guys all said that the first machine was functioning, correct? Mm -hmm. So try to think about, and if you want I can go back so you can write down the tables, try to think about why it is that you said that the first one was functioning. And try to like relate it to the, pretend that the button pushed and the beverage you received is your input-output chart. Does that make sense? So try to uh, go back and look at the tables and decide why it is that you said that the first one was functioning. Do you want me to bring back the other table or do you guys just remember what it was? I can remember. Do you want us to talk about it or just think about it for now? Think about it for like a minute and then you can talk to each other. You can write down your thoughts if you want or you can just gather.
Does everybody have like at least an initial thought? So, for like another minute, share with your partner. Let's just have you two since you're next to each other. Then you two, kind of share with your partner what you're thinking, and then we'll come together. So I said something kind of similar. I was talking about. I said the input gives the soda type, and the output gives the can of that soda. If it's still functioning properly, um, you know, what do you guys got? What talks think? about the soda? The can um, well, you will that when you be the result. Put in a dollar and you uh, that that will be the result. That drink out soda and choice. Mm -hmm. so I want to kind of that, each, that can will be each time you hit a button. Um, there's a, a, one there's one a direct relationship like between the two. Yeah. So, so you know it functions so properly. So that's what I was thinking. So you're saying if it's functioning, if it's functioning you're pushing, you push one button, there's one, one thing that you should get. Yeah. You did a good job of that. Thanks, you did too. Okay. So, does everybody want to share? I think you both kind of have the cons same consensus. Does everybody want to share like what you kind of came up with? Go for it, Josh. So one of the things we talked about was um, for the machine to be functioning properly, um, the can Type, the type of can that you get as your, in a sense, output is going to be like directly caused by whatever your input is. So your can is going to be a Coke can if, the, if this machine is functioning properly 100% of the time if the input is a Coke, if the soda choice is a Coke. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're saying that whatever button you push, there is an outcome that you should expect. Yes. That's going to be, I guess it doesn't have to be different than the other ones. Well, it should be different than the other ones. It should be its own unique thing. You should get that same thing every time you push that button. Mm -hmm. That's what you're saying? Yeah. All right. So that being said, can you guys come up with, all right, just pretend this cooking machine doesn't exist anymore. Now look at it as like an XY table, and you can put down examples if you want, you don't really have to, just kind of think to yourself if you want. Try to come up with your own definition of what a function is. And you can just go shake this off with each other if you want. Well, it's a function. Well, it's only one thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, coming back together, we'll have your group go first. Just oh what would you come up with? Try to explain that here. Uh, well, we said that based on the activity that we just did, that um, a function would be something where every x produces exactly one y, 
but also every Y is only produced from one specific X. Okay. So like you you can't get a sprite if you push sprite and a sprite if you push code. Okay. So I'm gonna steal some budget mark here. For this for that activity we just did with the code machine, yes. But what if I were to have Would that still be a function? I think it would be. You think it would be? I think it would be, yeah. So you're right that every x produces one y. So every input has a specific output that it would get. So every time you put in one, like for this function here, every time you put in a one, you'll get a zero. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean something else can be put in to get a zero as well. Mm -hmm. As long as one always gets zero and two always gets zero. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. So I actually like this little diagram that McKenna drew. Would you care to? Do you want me to draw that? Or I mean, they can, if they can see it, that's fine. Okay. Um, we, we drew a picture and I said there's like one, two, three, four options and each one this is a good function, goes to one output. But in this one, the one goes to both one and two, and four doesn't amount to anything. So that goes to two outputs, which is not very good. It's a bad, bad function. It's not a functioning function. All right, everybody agree with that? So just a few examples, just make sure everybody's on the same page. Well, we already did that, sorry. So a few examples real quick, just as a class shout out is this function. Hold up a one if you think it is, a two if you think it's not. Alright, everybody says it is. I agree, it is. Next example. What about this one? We got one one and three twos. Amber, why do you think it's three switching? No, I meant two. Okay. I meant I forgot three switches. Does everybody see why it is? Does anybody care to share real quick why it is? The nine goes to two numbers. Yes. You can't you can't have a um, that nine going to two different numbers unless you have unless your function changes entirely. Right. Uh, last example, real quick. Is this a function? This is kind of what we talked about earlier. So hold up a one if you think it is, two if you think it's not. Does everybody got a one? Everybody agree? Mm -hmm. I agree as well. So what about, what if you weren't given a table, you were just given a graph with no points plotted on it, you were just shown a picture like this. Kind of talk with your partners, Based on what we kind of think about what we've already done, well, let me just start with this. Think about, and you guys probably already know the answer, this is pretend you don't, this is discovery time. What do you guys think you would do to uh, define whether or not this is a function? So you're saying that, right, so you said every x value has one y value. Yeah. So what if, that was true with the That would have been bad. What if the graph were to happen to have a vertical component in it somewhere? Mm -hmm. Like say this wasn't, 
pretend that this wasn't just a straight line. Like say if you're up to draw another graph. What if your function went, or not, I guess. What if your graph went like that, and this is a vertical line right here? Would that still be the function? Well, no, because if that's just a straight vertical line, then that x value has multiple y terms. Good. Does everybody see that? Mm -hmm. So, that being said, so we've established that looking at a graph, we can tell if it's a function or not if it never has a vertical component in it. Because if that's the case, then that would mean x has more than one y, or the input has more than one output. So, can you guys think of a way to, like without having to think about it, is there like just a quick way you could look at a graph and do some kind of test to see if it's a function or not? Josh, what do you think? It looks like you know, you're talking about vertical lines over there. Basically, what I gathered from that was that if there was a vertical line anywhere on the graph, then it can't really be a function because you're going to have an x value with multiple y values. And so I think just looking at this graph right here, um, maybe Has to see if there's any vertical lines, and if there are no vertical lines um, on that uh, function line, then it's a function. So if you have a vertical, if you were to draw a vertical line anywhere on the graph, and you only touch one point, is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Then it yeah. is a function. That would, yeah. I think, yeah. As long as, as long as it's not touching two different, um, each vertical line is not touching two different points. Yeah. Or more. Right. So what you actually just came up with is called the vertical line test. And if you... Lots of thing. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were in for a second. So when you have a graph, like, like, we, like Josh kind of just said, if you can kind of just visualize it and kind of draw, you don't even have to draw them. But if at any point you can draw a vertical line and touch more than one point, then it's not a function. Because that would mean x has more than one y. Does that make sense? So now that we've established that, just to make sure everybody understands what's going on, you can do this on a sheet of paper or on your, or on your table. I think I took somebody's marker. So whatever you're working on, letter it. You don't have to worry about these last two where it says create your own. Just letter it from A to R, or number if you want to. That's 18. And what I want you to do is go through each of those individually. I want you to go through each one of those individually and say whether or not it's a function. And if it's not, say why it's not.
anybody need a minute or two more? All right, so there's a, is everybody good? I didn't mean to interrupt you, anybody. So since there's a lot of examples, let's just, we don't have to go through every single one, just tell me which ones you do not think are functions. Like I'll go through real quick, how about A? Does everybody, anybody say no? What about B? C? Anybody say no? Does that mean yeah, you say no? Yeah, I said no. Why do you say no? Because uh, the fives and the input both map to the same output. Oh, wait. It's just listed twice. Oh, because there's two fives. Mm -hmm. I see. So what? Does everybody see one they did? Tricky. Alright, what about D? Does everybody say no? You say no. Um, because you're having the same x value, but even though you're supposedly plugging it into the same equation, you're getting a different y value every time. Okay. What about E? Anybody say no? What about F? What about G? You guys say no? Does anybody say no for G? I'm gonna say no. Oh, yeah. Why do you say no for G? Because the eight has two the eight has two different y values. Same for H, right? It's got it only has two inputs and there's four outputs, so that means something's gotta be going to two. Well, one or more thing. Uh what about the ordered pairs? What about I? Did anybody say no? What about J? You guys see why? So with ordered pairs, uh, a little trick that you may or may not came up with, came up with, uh, came up with yourself. If you have an ordered pair, it doesn't matter if they have the same output. There just has to be a different input for each of those outputs. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to look at it, you could just look at the x values real quick. And this one, for example, none of the x values are the same. So that's going to be a function, right? When you look at the next one, you immediately see that you have two twos. So then you gotta check to make sure that they're different or the same. Does that make sense? So that, that way you're not like constantly looking back and forth and trying to figure it out. Uh, what about the graphs? Does anybody say no to any of these? Um, N. N? Yeah. What about, everybody see why fails vertical line test? Mm -hmm. What about O or P? It's another P. Good. What about Q? Yeah. And then R, the last one? Yes. All right, good. So everybody kind of gets the general idea. So here's my extension since we have time. So look at the equation at y equals 2x plus 3, and I didn't really check to see if you guys graphed it or not. But that might be something the students would do as soon as they see that to graph it and kind of check their vertical line test after learning it. So you've already seen this equation in the previous activity, so we've already established that it is a function. But now just looking at it, without actually creating a graph or a table, how could somebody be able to tell that it's a, that this equation is a function just by looking at it? They could recognize that it is If you just think about different inputs, then you think about like, okay, what if x is one? It's, I mean, I guess it's making a table in your head, but like, then you could do like, well, would there be any number that's the same as if x is 15? If that makes sense. Right. Try, what if I just looked at the slope? Like, what could I tell from just looking at the slope? Slope is 2 over 1. Right. So, and it doesn't matter if the slope is 0, because that would still pass the vertical line test. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, if you think about it in the equation, like y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope, 
If I were to show you this, you could just immediately look at the slope, and as long as it's not undefined, or in this sense, I guess you would, could have some crazy stuff and like other like nonlinear graphs, but with this example here, you can just see that your slope is not undefined. And no, does that make sense? Okay. That's all I got for you today.